Welcome, good evening. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Behind the Spotlight. Tonight I have Kansas City native, country artist, Drew Six in studio. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me, I'm looking forward to it. So you are going to kick it off with your song, She's Gonna Run? Yes. All right, it's all it's you. It's a brand new one, we're gonna try it out, all right? I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. Drew Six, everyone. Like a storm on the horizon The kind you want to chase You're pushing close to feel the rush Turn around but it's too late Here we are again Twisted in sheets and skin To leave my heart in my bed a wreck Before the sun comes in But those boots ain't made for standing She's gonna run She wants to steal all my attention She's like a gypsy thief Rips off my shirt Sinks my breath She loves me then she leaves Yeah, she's good at being bad Yeah, I'm burning for what she has Before she makes her get away I gotta make this moment last Cause those boots ain't made for standing still Gonna keep moving on to her next thrill Without all the damn thing she's on This is all we'll ever be Cause those boots ain't made for standing still Gonna keep moving on to her next thrill Go try to hold it down thinking she's the one so with legs like that she And that was She's Gonna Run by Drew Six. Now, She's Gonna Run sounds like a woman. She's trying to get away. Tell us about the inspiration behind the song. Well, part of the, part of the fun part of songwriting is you get to get outside of yourself a little bit. Yeah. And, and I kind of think you should put a little bit of yourself into everything that you write. But at mm -hmm. the same time, not everyone's life is exciting enough to write about all the things I want to write about. <laughs> so, so it's a gift to kind of uh, put yourself into that story. And doing what I do every night when I'm playing in live venues, I meet a lot of people and I meet a lot of what I would say free spirited girls. And yeah. that's what this song's about. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, kind of a fun way of looking at the warning signs were already there. You're giving a little bit of advice, but you're putting the guy in the song too. It's like he really, he's fallen in love with this girl, but you know, with legs like that, she's gonna run. So the, si the warning signs those, are there. Those boots weren't made for standing still. <sighs> That's right, right, right. Yeah, she's yeah. not gonna stick around. It's interesting though that you can probably see some of that happening in front of you oh. while you're performing or just in the environments, if you're at a bar. Do you just witness a lot of that and then kind of write about it? I do, and I write a lot about women because that's most of my audience. And yeah. And I, I prefer to think of that song as a strong woman song, you know, an, an independent woman who Absolutely. doesn't necessarily need the guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just a fun way of saying it because I'm, I'm the interpreter on stage every night singing it out. You're so, like, hey, yeah. man, I'm trying to help you out. That's right. But she's, yeah, she's a horse that can't be tamed. Exactly. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that, that's the whole 
kind of wild country Midwestern element in there too, of course. Yeah. yeah, and speaking of wild, I really like your boots and this boot cut going on down oh, here. Oh, thank you, appreciate it. The boots and, did you get those tailored like that? What do you call that cut? It's like a, uh, this it's is not called. A, it's, it's not a boot cut. It's like, they call it the rocker cut actually. It's like the most of my, cut. I don't buy any of my, almost all of my clothes come from somewhere else. And gotcha. I, was ba I was backstage with um, Sam Hunt at the, uh, nice. the Kenny Chesney show. And we our most of our conversation was talking about the boots he was wearing. And because he had, he actually had uh, like, I think they were furry leopard boots. I'm like, that's about furry leopard as anti-country as you can get. But it, they look cool though, you know? Sam Hunt <laughs> can pull it off. He could, he can, he can. I didn't say, he's a big guy, so I didn't say, no. I like them, I thought they were really cool, so. That's yeah. great. Well, there, there is this whole culture around boots and country music, so you Absolutely. have to pick wisely. And I feel like, especially as a performer, the way you dress yourself, the way you present yourself, it becomes part of your brand. Absolutely. So, and you know. it, it's a big part of what I do, and I, I really do have a passion in the fashion side of things. Yeah. And I'm always, that, that's been another way I express myself, and I'm, not everybody's into that, and if you're really bad at that, frankly, you probably should get a stylist because it is important because you are representing your brand. But uh, I worked with a group um, in Nashville and had an endorsement yeah. deal with them. And they're kind of moved over to the branding side. They're called Dead Horse Branding, but it's a couple of, Austra it's an Australian couple and they're awesome. And Steven Tyler wears their stuff. And oh. So I had the good fortune of kind of befriending them when I first started coming to town. And so they outfitted me in a lot of their stuff and they do a lot of cool rock and roll jewelry and that kind of thing. So, got it. so, so you've got a whole mishmash of yeah. A lot of inspiration, and we're going to get more into that here in a few minutes. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Behind the Spotlight. We are the dreamers, and we were born to fly. Good evening and welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. Today we have Drew Six in the studio, and you were telling us how you have so many different artists that you really look up to and that have inspired you. Now, I know the Eagles yeah, yeah. are one of your favorites. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, yeah I love What's the Eagles. What's your uh, favorite Eagles song? Oh, I don't think I could pick a favorite. You know, one of the yeah. things I like about those guys is just the challenge of all those great musicians working together. And I know it was a challenge the entire time because they didn't all get along. And, and yeah. it's almost not fair how much talent is in that group, you know. But That's uh, true. <laughs> I, I always tell people, so there's like, a new school of people that sell me they don't like country music and then I said do you like the Eagles do you like Fleetwood Mac and they're like yeah and I said if they came out today they would be country because that Nashville is in my opinion where the best songwriters in the world are right now and um, you know there's good and bad because Nashville certainly has a sound to where they use a lot of the same writers a lot of the same players but one of the things I love about it is it's not so pigeonholed I mean you get hip-hop in country you get Memphis Blues, which yeah. is Chris Stapleton. Everyone says, you know, he's pure country, but he's really a Memphis Blues guy, and I love that stuff. And then you have, you know, the pop stuff, and like a Keith Urban who has kind, kind of some 80s rock influence. A lot of the rock people kind of ended up there. And so the Eagles were just incredible songwriters and, and great all the way around. And um, so the Eagles are kind of timeless. They are, yeah. And, and, and I think you'll find a lot of artists in country, there'll be a lot of them that you don't see years from now, but there, there's some timeless artists out there that will continue to last and what I strive for with what I do is the difference between depth and width and what width is is you know if you're a boy band you have the masses the that mass love appeal. you yeah yeah and the depth is what sustains a career and those are the fans that I I'm fortunate enough to have but that's that's what I'm building because I, I want to do this forever you know the yeah. people that are invested in what you're doing and the Eagles certainly have that as an example Absolutely. but yeah it, it's interesting to see how uh, your career can progress over time because naturally at different stages of life different things become important to you Absolutely. and so you're you're appealing not to just be appealing like Hey, look at me, you're appealing because you want a faithful fan base that will follow you throughout your life, which makes sense. And, you know, along with those different stages of life, you have been an artist really your whole life, right? You've always wanted to do music. Yeah, I did. I went to college and I did actually marketing and advertising, which so frankly, I use little... <laughs> more yeah, than the other. That's and true. I don't really, I don't read music. I'd be better if I did, honestly, but that's just not the way my brain works. Completely self-taught. Yeah, and, uh, nice. but I always knew what I wanted to do. I mean, when I was in grade school, I knew 
I want to be a rock star. This is like, so thankfully, I think that's a gift because a lot of people <laughs> never know what they want to do, you know? Yeah. And I also have the privilege of doing that full time. You know, that's, that's my whole gig. You know? Yeah. So did you ever get discouraged when you were, you know, I'm going to be a rock star and then you went into marketing and surely there were voices along the way that were kind of like, you're crazy. What are you doing? Oh, I get discouraged every day still. Yeah. You really, it's not about everybody else, you know, and that, that's the hard part. The, the high points are, are what everybody sees. And, and it's yeah. interesting on this journey, how many times people in their mind, oh, you made it big. And then the next day you're doing something that's, you know, really small. I mean, but that's part of the, that's part of the journey. And every yeah. artist that I look up to has gone through that. And when I'm in Nashville, you know, I'll hear about some major star that I remember when they were here and four people were here, you yeah. know, and uh, the hardest part is to stay in motion because you, you, do, you get depressed on the downsides and it, when it's all you do, you have a lot of time to sit and think and, yeah. and second guess yourself. You, you go up and down and, and being a songwriter, you, you get writer's block, you just, you get down on yourself. But the thing is, my trick is stay in motion. And Objects if you're doing- Objects in motion, stay in motion. Objects yeah. at rest, stay at rest. Absolutely, yeah. and even if it's baby steps and you're moving forward and, and I feel like I've continually moved forward, not as quickly as I want to necessarily, but it does make me appreciate everything a little bit Well, more. and you're pretty much nonstop. I mean, you perform over 250 shows a year yeah. How do you manage to keep going and not lose steam? Well, I try to, I've tried to taper this off in the last year, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, the Nashville thing. It's like normally I'm there the first part of the week and then I will do shows through the end of the week and I'm in Kansas City a lot doing those kind of things. But it's, you know, it's not, I mean, I have to give a lot of credit to my fans and, and frankly, when they let me know, you know, it's time to hang it up and maybe I need to think about it, but their enthusiasm and their belief in being there for me I mean, in the down times, I mean, I don't think no matter how much I express to them, how much I appreciate it, I don't necessarily know that they get it. But that's yeah. what it's about is moving people. They'll know? ever understand how much fuel they probably give you to continue Absolutely. doing what you're doing. Yeah. Now, are you starting to taper it off for work-life balance reasons? Uh, no, it's just uh, I, I spent so much, you know, we're doing some more bigger picture stuff. Yeah. And I'm in Nashville a lot more than I used to be. And and I want to keep my focus on that, but at the same time, my job is playing music, so yeah. you have to make a living and you have to balance that kind of thing. So you're but, kind of being maybe more selective now, and you want yeah, to be yeah. really purposeful with how you use your time. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. understand that. Um, and you, being a, a traveling artist on the road, you have a very beautiful wife yeah. at home. Yeah. Um, tell us about your story and well, how you guys met. I think being married and doing what I do is you have to have the right partner for sure. Yeah. And the successful marriages that I hear are the people that when they get married, the, their partner knew what they were getting into. You know, okay. I haven't changed and she yeah. hasn't changed either. And she's extremely independent and that's really important. You know, yeah. she doesn't, frankly, she was pretty unimpressed with what I did at the beginning. You know, I had to win her over. <laughs> she's so. like, oh, a musician, <laughs> yeah. how trite. So, I, and I think part of why it worked was uh, she didn't know what I did in the beginning. Okay. So it was like a friend. And so that was, you know, a legitimate situation where it's like a friend recommending somebody. And then yeah. you know, it just, it took some time. And, and of course, you know, being a musician, I, I think most guys would be lying if they didn't say that a little bit was like they got in it to meet girls and uh, you know. yeah absolutely and, and in high school especially and and even now i'm a lot more shy than people think and i tell people that and they're like you're not shy you're no shy. way yeah but i've had to overcome that for the business side of what i do because right. it does me no good if i can't go out and talk to people and connect with people outside of the stage but it's a great way to you know knock down that barrier and people come to me and talk to me about, about my music and that kind of gets it going. And when I'm down on what I do, which just like anybody's job, you feel yeah. that way sometimes. One of the greatest gifts of what I do is the people from all walks of life that I would never met. And yeah. many of them bec have become close friends uh, just through music. And because music really does move people. And, and that's what it's all about, really. It's those relationships and touching people. I think life and, is about relationships yeah, absolutely. as well. And you've, have you noticed much of a difference from writing as somebody who's single and then writing as somebody who's married and looking to start a family? You know, I, I used to wonder about that a lot because yeah. I would ask a lot of my mentors, song, songwriters that yeah, are very how do successful, you do it? Yeah. where do you find your inspiration? And the people, you, you learn the craft 
And especially when you're doing commercial music like I do, there is a craft as far as if it's going to work on radio, but hopefully you do it in a way that hasn't been done before, you know, but it's just like a language and then it becomes intrinsic. You don't, you don't think about it. So you learn the craft and then you find inspiration and it might be uh, from a movie, you know, yeah. someone says something, but I think the most important part is as an artist being an observer, like yeah. finding those little moments and, you know, recording them too, putting them yeah. in your phone, not forgetting yeah, them. It's the forget. same thing, yeah. you wake up in the middle of the night. But being single to being married, I, I always just thought, well, when I get married, it's like, you know, are girls still gonna like me when I'm performing? <laughs> and frankly, it's way better because it creates a little bit of a, maybe a barrier that's, that's yeah, healthy, absolute healthy. Boundaries. Because you're two yeah. different people on stage and when you're not. Yeah. And the people that have not had that balance are the ones that you hear the tragic stories about, you know, because yeah. they haven't been able to have that balance in their life yeah. uh, to where they have something besides what's, what's on stage. You have to nurture both and give, you know, Yeah, time you do. And, and then and having a partner is very, very healthy and helpful, Absolutely. the right partner. So uh, for marriage has been awesome for me and more than I could have ever expected, yeah. That's so great to hear. That's yeah. so refreshing to hear. And okay, I have uh, time for one last question. Tell us about your work with uh, Children's Variety. Oh, Variety Children's Children, Charity. Sorry, so, Variety's Children's Charity. Yeah, so we're Charity. gonna do um, a web exclusive song that I actually wrote for them. And uh, they approached me. I'd done lots of work with Deb and that organization uh, over the years where I basically just performed at their events. They used to do an Oscar party downtown and then they changed that over to Midland Theater. And uh, they asked me to sing with Danielle, who is now my friend, who lives with several palsy. And she, one of her dreams was acting, singing. She has a lot of dreams and she does them all. She's skydived, she does, wow. yeah, you know, she does skiing, all this kind of stuff, which is great. So she's very able uh, and basically no one can tell her she can't do something, which is really cool. And I, we, we sang together and the, I asked what song we needed to do for this and they said, you have creative freedom. And I said, well, I'm going to write one. Very, very <laughs> hard song to write because I, did, I wanted to approach the subject yeah. with dignity and I didn't want people to look at me and go, well, you don't know, you know, how do you know what this is like? And what I learned was being around the kids a lot, being around the parents a lot, I kind of grew up, and I think a lot of people did, it's like don't stare if someone's different, don't, and yeah, a lot of people just don't say anything. It's probably more about they, acceptance. Yeah, and they, but and you meet them, they want to be just like everybody else. And, and we connected on that, making your dreams come true, not letting people tell you you can't, you know. So, and as you said, we're going to do uh, the web exclusive on that, yeah. which is going to be online, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. We have one more song from Drew Six, and this one is called Boyfriend. Where can we find it? Well, it's going to be coming out soon. We have a music video that we did in Nashville. Very and nice. it'll be on iTunes and everything else, including the video. We're doing a big concert later, just a little bit down the road in Nashville, a showcase, and then we're going to release the whole thing. And it's uh, about a girl whose boyfriend you don't really like. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like the, the prettiest girl in the bar with a really bad boyfriend. And she I does, do she see deserves that a lot. better. Yes, absolutely. ladies, this one is for you. Yes. Boyfriend by Drew Six. Shake it, you got it. Shake it, you got it. Like your short shorts, tall boots, your sand legs, and country roots. The way you dance up close to the stage. I like your concert t shirt, your hair flipping when you flirt. Girl, you really light up this place. I take that cotton candy perfume, your hips swaying across the roof. Come and give me a smile on your face. Well, I call you a perfect work of art. Everyone for just one palm will say it right now. Everything about you turns me on, except your boyfriend. But not your boyfriend. Here we go. Shake it, you got it. Shake it, you got it. He's a slick back, cocky walking in your face, trash talking, money flashing, son of a gun. 
Well, he keeps on yelling free bird, but I don't think he's ever heard a single song that Skinner has done. He's got his hands all over you, showing us who's who, he's trying to ruin all of your fun. Well, he better not tip over my beer with all this strutting around up here. I'm gonna say it again. Well, everything about you turns me on, except your boyfriend. We could be leaving this bar alone without your boyfriend. Well, I think I would like to take you home, but not your boyfriend. Well, I don't know how you fit that cell phone in your back. Kid, you got it. She kid, you got it. But here's my number in case later on you want to rock it. Well, everything about you turns me on, except your boyfriend. But not your boyfriend. Here we go. Shake it, you got it. Shake it, you got it. Shake it, you got it. Yeah.